Hi, I'm Darren Drakeford. Um, it's May 2nd, 2011. Interviewing with Pam Siegel. Uh, can you start off by telling me a little, about, little bit about yourself, where you're from, and your educational background? I am from New York City, New York. I grew up in Greenwich Village. Uh, my family still live there. I went to private school for K through 12 in New York City. I went to a public university, the University of Cincinnati, for my undergrad. And I got my master's at another public university, Florida Atlantic, um, in Boca Raton, Florida. And I am currently getting my PhD in literacy out of the education department at the University of Maryland. So I've been in school for a long time. I did take a break and teach for a couple years, but I have been in school for a very long time. Uh, all right, out of those three schools you just named, what school did the, um, the campus, what campus did you like better? What campus did I like better? I would say I liked my undergrad campus better because I spent most time at the University of Cincinnati. So I actually have a degree from there in secondary education and English. I have two degrees from them. Um, that was my favorite campus. It was small, 45,000 people, not people small, but campus, we were in mile squared. So I liked it the best. <laughs> now can you tell me a little bit about your religious beliefs? I identify with being Jewish. I'm not very religious. I would say I'm sort of in the middle of reform and conservative, which is sort of like not religious and sort of religious. Um, but I'm more, I would say, spiritual than anything else. Why would you say spiritual? Spiritual. I don't go to temple very often. I don't feel the need to follow some of the religious rules that maybe other people did. So I grew up Orthodox. I grew up in an Orthodox house, and then I decided not to be Orthodox. That is my religious background. <laughs> uh, what type of support does the IOP, P, IOP program that you assist will offer to the student athletes at the University of Maryland? So the IOP program is the um, individual learning program, and what it does is it offers one-on-one -on -one tutoring and mentoring for students who um, either have learning disabilities or came in at a lower deficit or came in late to the program. So it doesn't mean that they have any, you know, really big problems, but it's sort of to get them situated and to feel comfortable on campus and in the school environment. Um, so what I do is I tutor and mentor, but I tutor and mentor English. So I do a lot of helping with writing and organizing and drafting and revising when it comes to papers. So the um, so the idea of the ILP program is that every student who comes in, there's like a biography of them, and there's you know they work with them to figure out what would work best, whether they just need a mentor or they need extra hours for tutoring, or do they need a tutor for one thing and not for another? So it just depends. Um, what can you tell me about the research you're currently doing on literacy and football players? So my dissertation research is the connection between literacy and football, which sounds very random and out there, but it's really quite interesting. I just wrote a grant, so I can tell you why. <laughs> so um, what I'm looking at is how do football players conceptualize literacy? How do they define it? Where do they see it being used? Where? How do they define it in every aspect of their life? So how do they define it on the football field? How do they define it in the classroom? How do they define it in life? Um, and then what, what does that mean for them as a student and as an athlete? Um, so the idea is that most people view literacy as something that's only in the classroom. You don't, it doesn't come outside the classroom. Or maybe in, social, in, in your real life it's how you count money or how you read basic kind of stuff, but with what literacy research has been doing is that it's, literacy is more than just being able to read and write. It's being literate on the computer. It's being able to read on the computer. It's being able to understand what words and phrases should be used in an interview and all of those kind of things. So literacy is expanding and therefore I'm curious to see what that means for football and for the educational advancement of football players because they are, as of 2010, they are the ones who graduate, besides basketball, the least amount of players in the NCAA. All right, jumping <laughs> back to the uh, IOP program, uh -huh. is, do you see some type of connection 
with the um, the athletes you work with, with learning the way they learn on the field and off the field? Do I see a connection? Yeah. Well, I think there's a disconnect between learning on the field and learning in the classroom. And that's part of my research as well. So when I did a pilot study, which is like an initial study before I decided on my dissertation, what I found was a lot of the players saw literacy as being different on the field as they saw it in the classroom. And they didn't see the connection between the two. They didn't see how they could coincide and the aspects. And there's been a little bit of research out there on basketball and literacy and how um, athletes tend to develop literacies on the foot on the basketball court where it's language, they understand scores, but they don't see how that connects to the classroom because the classroom is more about what they would say a quiet body and not an active body and mind. So the idea is you learn all these things on the field and you don't see how they could connect to the classroom ever. Because in the classroom you're supposed to sit, you're supposed to listen, and on the field you're supposed to run around, you're supposed to be active, you're supposed to be involved in your learning. Whereas in the classroom, it's most of the time not. So I think what I see is that a lot of athletes, a lot of players, and I would be a perfect example because I was a swimmer, um, don't have a very hard time in the classroom because they feel like they have to work extra hard because it doesn't come as easily and because it hasn't been um, prefaced as much as it was on the field. So you, I was good at swim, I was good in the pool, but I wasn't good in school, so I had to work extra hard in the in the classroom, not necessarily extra hard in the pool. So the idea is that there's this disconnect between the two. They don't coincide well. If I can do one, I can actually do the other. So that's where the disconnect is. Uh, <laughs> after you receive your PhD, which you will, um, what are your <laughs> By the time you graduate, I will get my PhD. I will graduate the same year as you, maybe. Um, what do I plan? There are options. There's, um, I would like to be a professor, but I would like to work with the connection between athletics and literacy. That would be one thing. Um, I'd also like to be a consultant for the NCAA and for universities and help design literacy programs for college athletics as to, um, I guess, to get rid of that disconnect between the two. So sort of be there so I can go into a program and design something based on who their student athletes are and what they need and what they're missing. Um, when you took the break from school and you became a teacher, what and where did you teach? Um, well, I took a four-year break and one year of it was spent abroad in Ireland because I wasn't ready to be an adult yet, so I took a year off. Um, and I was a waitress, I didn't do any teaching. And then I came back and I decided to be a teacher and I ended up in the great state of Florida in Broward County in Fort Lauderdale. So I taught near the beach I taught middle school, seventh and eighth grade English, and then I taught high school, 10th grade English. So I taught for three years. I also did an internship year as a, as a college student. Um, so I was a full, I was a part-time teacher. So technically you could say I taught for four years in the public school system, but Broward County was there and I taught for three. Do you miss Florida? No, not at all. I think it's an awful state. <laughs> uh, never. Don't ever ask anyone from there though, they won't say that, but I don't think they treat their teachers well and their education system well. I'm not a fan. Uh, is there anything else you'd like to add? No, I think that's it. Thank you for interviewing me. Thank you for coming. <laughs>